Okay, so today I'm going to talk about how no self and individual are not mutually exclusive, right? They go together and how energy fits into the picture because a lot of people have been messaging me saying what we really are is beyond energy. It's beyond energy. It's it's uh, you just be aware of the energy, stay stay as the self, be aware of the energy. And that doesn't resonate with me and i've i have gone into that in detail and at great length in other videos so maybe if you're just tuning in to me recently maybe you haven't seen those but i had a spontaneous awakening into feeling myself as the whole universe as love as awareness as also within myself the existence of soul um, yet there was no identification with any of it. There was just all of those dimensions simultaneously. And as the awakening progressed, there was a phase where I was identified, right? I literally felt myself back here. I felt myself identified as the witness. And some people call that soul, realization of soul. And I literally did not feel myself to be embodied, but watching the body, watching everything. So... <sighs> Beyond that, right, is no self, no experiencer, which I must say, and I've said this before, that even in no experiencer, even in no self, there is an experiencer because otherwise nobody would ever be able to explain it or talk about it. It, it is registering to something, maybe not to someone, but to something, right? And the difference is that the level of individuality at that, in that dimension um, is like a minute fraction of the individuality you feel in other dimensions so if you think of this right as kind of this would be your physical manifestation let's say this is like um energy presence right and mind includes mind creates energy then you have awareness right awareness of these things and then you have no self no experiencer so what i experienced was I went here and then I came back. <laughs> um, and it's like, and I'm still here. And I'm here too at the same time. Like there's no self, right? There's no, I don't feel like a separate doer from the whole. But if you want to, like realization is one thing, but embodiment is another thing, right? So if I want to take the realization of what I truly am, like, love and awareness, loving awareness, and I want to have it manifest in the physical world, you have to travel through the, the, uh, the energy. And so somebody also commented, like, it's really simple. If you're all aligned, like mind, body, energy, like things just happen. But the thing is, mind is, is a trickster. It can be quite a trickster. Caged is a term that I, that I use. It can be quite disassociated. It can be quite fragmented. So what happens is that when this realization tries to stream into this, into your physical reality, it bumps into all of these, it's kind of perfect, like all these little challenges um, because like maybe you're really disassociated. So what I, what I, what I observed <clears throat> from watching Advaita Vedanta teachers, not all of them, is that there was a disconnect between their humanity and their realization of themselves. So that might have manifested, for example, as pretty extreme neurosis, might have, um, might have manifested as abusing people, abusing women, abusing children, um, taking advantage of their position in any way, shape or form in a dark way. And when I say dark, I mean in a way that's not coming from love. Um, and so what's happening there? Well, they're, they're sitting over here speaking about this, yet the way that it's streaming in to their physical life is that it's, it's, in, these it's in this rocky place where if, if the energy was addressed, right, the mind and the energy was addressed, there would be kind of like a more seamless, a seamless manifestation of it. So when I talk about anchoring frequencies okay anchoring frequencies you might know right you might 
have actually had the experience that you're beyond this, right? And again, experience. People like to pick apart these words, but you literally know yourself beyond this. But yet your physical life is still playing out. The momentum of your mind is still playing out, right? If you're truly observing it, it will slow down. It will slow down eventually and not move as much. But the thing is, there's some pretty sticky, stubborn parts of the mind that continue to move. And you see that when you tune into a teacher who doesn't feel, it's, it doesn't feel seamless. It doesn't feel seamless. And again, I'm not saying they're wrong. Maybe they're right. Like, I don't, it's not wrong or right. It's like maybe for them, they don't care about having a seamless expression into the physical world or having the neuroses be dissolved by their realism. But that's, that's not me. Me, like I want this to be shining through this. And so in order to, for that to really be a reality, like you have to address the energy. So when I talk about anchoring frequencies, the reason why anchoring frequencies is so important, right? And I mentioned um, books like the, the Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East and like Rainbow Light Body Teachings and Jesus and Babaji, Mahavatar Babaji. Like those are what resonate with me. Like, and again, you got to use your discernment and be devoted to what's real to you. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anything. Like, like follow your heart. Follow your heart. That's what I'm doing. If you, if what I'm saying doesn't resonate with you, then just don't watch. You know what I mean? Like, I won't take it personally. But, um, so this, right, if you anchor the frequency of love, let's say these little shards represent the parts of yourself that don't know this, right? So you know this, you literally got injected out of your identification with body and form and you're in this formless place, right? You're the unborn. You are, but, but, but then it's like, this is a, this is like a, some people move back and forth often, right? Me, like right now where I am in my journey, like I was here like in this kind of pure state for a few years. And then what started happening automatically without me reading a book, without me trying to do anything, which is always the case, right? Things are just happening. Like it started moving back and it started having me address the these parts, the parts that are shattered. Um the parts that don't know who they are, right? And how does that manifest? That manifests when you interact with a human and part of you, you know, wants to, I don't know, be unkind to them or use them for something or get from them something that part of you doesn't realize is within. So anchoring the frequency of wholeness, if you really make wholeness real to you, if I'm conscious of my wholeness in my energy, then what happens is the shards come together and the no self, in, in the same way that no self expresses as a crystal or as a flower and just emanates its beauty, then the same thing can happen for us. We just emanate our beauty. We just emanate our beauty without all of the, um, the mind and energy issues that come up, which, which throw us out of presence. So in order to make the journey back, right, even though energy and presence is here while like no experiencer is here, you got to be in presence and you got to feel all of these pieces as they arise. You have to be present with your pain. But more importantly, in my opinion, from what I've learned and what I'm bringing through is to channel, to be conscious of wholeness in your mind, not just because you've had this experience or because you got ejected out of form, and so you know what you are. You really know what you are. But guess what? There's another part of you that doesn't. So, so the, the reason why I speak about frequency and the reason why I find it important to use mind and, and, and vitalize and strengthen the body is so that you can be that emanation that you are, the ray of the sun that you are, right? Otherwise, if you don't address the energy in the mind, you're just observing it, but those shards are still there. You could sit over here and observe this, but they're still there. At least that was my experience. And a lot of them, a lot of this get clear, gets cleared up just by sitting here. It does because 
because because you have such a clear um because there's so much contrast between unkindness and you know like neti neti what is not me then you don't give it action but stuff can happen in your life right um you know especially in the time we're living in with covid and and all of this stuff like stuff can come up to trigger these parts again and so what's happening is that there's not a clear beam and so that's an opportunity for you to bring this into alignment with this and so if there's parts of you and part of like knowing that you are a ray an emanation of the divine is not just loving awareness it's also all these other divine qualities like sovereignty like the ability to master any situation see that's where these things kind of come into question right it's really easy to be a philosopher or even somebody who's actually experienced this and to sit here but but if you're going to bring it all the way home right you have to acknowledge like well if let's say your life you're a western person and there's challenges in your life right do you know what you are do you know that you are a, like an emanation of the divine you are the you are the divine and the unborn and you are an emanation of it and you are nuclear energy do you know that do all the parts of you know that do you know that if there's a challenge in your life that you can simply create a solution because you're create you are creation because your creativity itself that is to me what was missing in advaita vedanta and in in other things that i heard again i'm not a i'm not a scholar of any of those things but there's other divine qualities if you're going to be an active participant in the physical world and maybe you're not interested in that so that's that's you i respect that that's not me though i've mentioned like babaji like mahavatar babaji and how he still takes a form like he's a very realized being but he still appears in india and blesses villages and and it's like that's his emanation like Ramana Maharshi just got absorbed back into the source and he didn't touch the mind and like I'm not saying that's wrong but that's not me at least not right now and I'm not I don't know if I'll get there or if that's just not me I don't I'm not really thinking about it I'm just being real with what's real I'm, I'm honoring what's real and to me like Babaji is a great example like he's just a different way that that enlightenment manifests he remains an individual and he remains in service to this plane you gotta you gotta be with real with your heart you can't try to make a philosophy like you can't superimpose anything over over your reality so the role of energy right no self no self can come into form and you still don't feel like there's an experiencer that's that's I was gonna say that's my experience because like at the end of the day like when people say no experience it's like relative to what you used to call experience which is like I'm the doer like I'm I'm a me doing um but there's still like it's still registering and this is coming up as I'm speaking like I don't think about these things but like the no self is just seamlessly expressing and what I've noticed, right, it's like just becomes action, 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 action. When I was like sitting down to record this video, like these thoughts started to come into my mind. I don't think about this. People like messaged me and, and so like this started coming in. And so no self expresses as the individual, but it's still a self, like it's divine self. It's just like, it's not a separate self like thinking that it's doing anything it's just the unobstructed emanation of the godhead and you could call that no self you could call that divine individual i don't know call it whatever you want but my experience is that th this is not a paradox it's just you realize like what you really are and then it can stream into your physical reality if that's what if that's what's in your heart if that's what you as a divine is doing here to stream into this physical world maybe you're not maybe you're just finding this and being called elsewhere maybe you leave the body i don't know again i'm not here to tell anybody what's right 
but but people have been commenting about this issue like well we are beyond energy and we just give energy it's and so the problem with that is that if you stay separate from energy then you are like neutering yourself or like staying like cutting a part of yourself off and you are not giving yourself the opportunity to experience what like an unobstructed emanation could radiate into this world to experience yourself as that and again i observed many like teachers and like lineage holders and stuff but i would notice like there was like all this neurosis or like this weird behavior that and it's not a judgment it was like what i observed was bumping up against what was in my heart to express here and i just found it off that's me that's just me take it or leave it again so again no self and individual are not mutually exclusive it's always been that way. It's always been no self being an individual. But the difference is the reason why you want to use your God-given creative energy to, to smooth out this experience is because, you know, I do believe while, while the universe is perfect as it is, there's a certain calling, at least in my heart, to to radiate myself complete, like to radiate myself as unobstructed as is possible into the earth as a service, or I should say as an act of love. Because when you can do this, and, and by the way, again, anchoring a frequency helps. Why? Well, you can observe all the pieces, observe, 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 just observe it always, but that may or may not smooth it out because some of these pieces are very sticky, very um, disassociated from reality. And this teaching to stay out here can actually reinforce these pieces as staying disassociated from reality. Okay, so I am talking about energy to help you bring realization into the physical world, into the body, and into the mind. Right? Into energy. Um, that's been my experience. That's been my journey. And... And again, take it or leave it, because I think it's so important for people to have their own discernment and their own, like, honor themselves about what feels real for them. And if it if something that I am saying, like, doesn't resonate with you, then that's fine. It's not a problem. So, yeah, in a nutshell, again, no self and individual are not mutually exclusive. You've always been no self expressing as an individual, except the energy practices can help the the emanation radiate unobstructed it it increases the radiation um it you know there's a difference between a lot of people who are just speaking from this place right if you feel their energy sometimes a lot of them are missing the element of love some of them aren't some of them you really do feel love but um, and maybe there's people who are teaching about, oh, just go beyond energy and just stay up here. But actually without knowing it, they have embodied the energy because you can feel it in their field. You can feel like people and their energy is real. People enter other certain beings auras and you feel like this incredible love. Um, and so to me, like what love is, is like you want to bring this realization into form. That's what that's the action of love in my life at least so yeah um these teachings like no self teachings all those they can be confusing they're not inherently confusing but they might confuse people who already tend to be confused or tend to disassociate or tend to want to go beyond the human experience or beyond what's in their energy field yeah that's very safe that's very safe it's peaceful but the problem is that, well, it's not a problem. The reality is that this stuff continues to play out. It continues to play out. It continues to create. So the question is, do you as loving awareness and creator want to be in, in integrity throughout all the dimensions of yourself? Or are you just going to sit up here and watch these pieces do whatever they do? That's a question for you to answer. I can't answer that question for you. you got to answer it for yourself. But that's my answer to the question. And um, I hope it has any value for you. Or if it doesn't, 
again, tune out and use, I really encourage people to just honor their discernment and be real with what they need. So have a good day.